which folks, 965 here, as you'll probably tell we're back in the workshop. Um, one of the things that was on my list that people were asking me about um, was T and K brackets and um, I actually got speaking to a chap via Facebook um, in the week and um, he's looking to make his own uh, not to sell but for himself um, doesn't live too far away from from me and um, I've been around had a chat with him made us a brew so that was all good thank you very much and um, he's quite happy to make his own but he's a bit unsure about how to go about it so Tonight we're making tea and K, tea and K brackets. Uh, for those of you who don't know what they are, they're generally the favoured choice of um, radio operators for putting a mast up to take an antenna, but they are also used for satellite installations, um, TV aerials, um, receiving aerials, anything really that needs to be on top of a mast and secured to a structure or a building or any wall essentially, any solid mount. Um, they are quite readily available to buy, actually. Um, they come in various sizes. The three most common are probably 12 inch, 18 inch, and 24 inch. So one foot, about a foot and a half, and two foot. And the measurement refers to how far out from the wall the bracketry is. So if you've got, like me, um, at home, you've got quite an overhang, um, the wall in relation to the overhang of the roof in my, at my, at my um, QTH is 16 inches so I've got 18 inch T and, K, T and K brackets to allow the mast to clear the the edge of the roof and the the guttering but if you're going to put it on the gable end or where there's no overhang you can quite easily get away with 12 inch really depends what you're putting up and what your requirements are so what we're going to use angle iron here, this is 5mm um, thick mild steel angle and it's 40mm 40mm by 40mm which is approximately an inch and a half for those of you that like to work in old money um, so that's what we're going to do, we're going to build it out of that um, knock up a T bracket, knock up a K bracket and um, we'll go from there basically, see you in a bit ok so as with pretty much everything that I make I tend to start off with a sketch um, break each item down into component parts, work out my sizes then I can work out how much material I'm going to need for the project so that's what's referred to as a K bracket and that is what is referred to as a T bracket that one does look like a T that one personally I don't think it does look like a K but there we go we won't we won't buck the trend so there's a lot of debate over whether this one should be at the top or this one should be at the top the way I've got it here on the drawing was purely for drawing purposes. It's not, um, in fact, it's opposite to the way I've got them installed at home. Uh, I've just put a radio in the workshop, so I need to um, have a mast for the antenna. At the moment, it's just propped up against the wall. It does okay. It's your typical home base. Gets out pretty well, but doesn't hear an awful lot. When the skip is running, though, it's quite handy, and I often have it in the background um, while I'm working. So what I've done is I've broken down the each bracket into its component parts and that is the T essentially, um, quite obviously that is the T, go the other way, there we go. So that is the bit that fits to the wall, okay, and it's just made out of angle iron. So that piece is 12 inches long and that's the piece that comes out from the wall and that piece is 18 inches long. So if we move the camera down so you can see the exploded diagram of the K, there it is. Again, the back piece that goes onto the wall is 12 inches, same as the, the one above. The vertical support is also 12 inches long. This is the part that comes out from the wall, so again that is 18 inches. And then the diagonal support here, which goes in here, approximately 13 inches, but you may need to trim that to fit depending on what angle you go, you go with. So that's, that's essentially all we got, that's what we're going to do. Um, as I was saying before, just as an illustration, in case it wasn't very clear, the, um, the measurements relate to the overhang of your house. So if you can imagine that this piece here is the roof on all three, okay, and this is your wall. Some houses have got a very slight overhang, so you can get away with the 12 inch brackets. My house is like this, it's got quite a, a well... 
it's a reasonably large soffit I think they call that so I've got the 18 inch brackets because you need to space that out from the wall enough so that your antenna can run past the roof and past the guttering and then some houses have got a much bigger soffit and again you would use the 24 inch brackets so that's it we're going to get the, uh, the chop saw out and uh, we're going to start carving up the material catch you in a bit okay so we're using the uh, the big Sealy chop saw which I've got back now um, <clears throat> it currently has a fibrous disc um, similar to that of an angle grinder disc I, I don't really like them to be honest uh, you get a lot of sparks off them and um, they're it's just generally messy you get a lot of the fibrous stuff in the air and you've got to wear masks and all sorts of stuff and it's not my preferred but I will use it until it's till it's um, gone and I shall replace it with a uh, a metal cutting disc with teeth much like the previous saw you saw the uh, the evolution rage anyway <clears throat> I've got it um, in position as to where I'm going to cut it so all I do to measure it up is for it to get the tape measure to the right distance the right measurement which in this case is 18 inches and I just position the end of the tape measure up against the edge of the blade and lay it down on top and they can see that's going to be 18 inches you have to take into account a lot of people don't I see a lot of people do this you have to take into account the thickness of the blade so if you want the end of the part to be here then measure up to the edge of the blade don't bring the saw down on top of your line because the saw blade is three or four mil thick so what you'll end up doing is cutting everything a little bit short so we're going to get the safety kit on um, safety specs and um, this thing is very very loud so ear defenders incidentally they are military ear defenders and I picked them up on Salisbury Plain when I was about phew, I don't know I was only a kid I was still at school <laughs> and I've had them ever since so um, surprising what you can find up there we'll reposition the camera and we'll uh, we'll start cutting okay so we're going to uh, start now I've got my uh favorite working top on uh, it is incredibly warm so um, I'm gonna sweat for this one but never mind it's all part of uh, part and parcel of the metal worker really let's get cutting It is a nice clean cut and it is a nice square cut but it takes forever and it generates so much heat the end of that I, I can't even touch the end of that so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna swap over to my other saw I think and um, we'll use that one instead Okay, so the cleanup after the cutting is, uh, well, on a table with holes in, quite easy really. <laughs> I've got a um, catch tray underneath, so uh, every month, every month I'll just empty the tray out, and um, yeah, it's usually quite full. But as you can see, there's quite a lot. This is a combination of obviously the metal that I've cut and uh, also the blade because it's a fibre blade or an abrasive blade I think they call it and um, 
no, not very nice to breathe in. So I would advise you to do it outside if you can. And if you can't, make sure you wear a good mask. Um, you don't want to be breathing any of that stuff in really. But there we go, all done, all tidy. Right, we'll clean up the metal and we'll be back. Okay, so we've got the, the, the pieces all cut out and that's essentially um, how they're going to go together. Um, that one was obviously going to be an equal distance. What we'll do is we'll mark out the holes here and here, here and here, to take a U-bolt. That's going to be where the mast sits. We shall mark in the holes on here in the same spot. So what I shall do is put them on top of one another and drill them together so they're exactly the same. Likewise with the bolt holes for these. These are the ones where it's going to go onto the wall. So if you imagine that goes up on the wall like that. Okay, yeah. So still keeping an eye on that. I'm going to put a hole in here and a hole in here for a bolt. This is the back stay for the other one. So I shall do those two together as well. So the holes are exactly the same. So when they're all put together, everything will line up. But that's basically how it's going to go together. So uh, we'll catch you, uh, catch you back in the next bit. Okay, so it's time to measure up and mark out the holes for the U-bolts. Um, quick tip here, you'll see that I've coloured it in with black permanent marker. The reason for that is when you scribe your line, it's much easier to see a scribed line with a black background than it is anything else. You can get something called engineer's blue, which is like a little pot and a little thing, and you colour it in blue, but black marker's a good tip. So, I've decided to use two inch U-bolts or V-bolts. Um, two inch diameter mast is probably about average for most home base installations and the centre of the U-bolt is going to sit at 15 and a half inches from the wall. Now I've also measured from centre here to centre there and that is 63.5 mil and uh, if we just half that it's 31.75 so 30 wall I'll do is measure 31.75 from this centre line to here and likewise on the other side and that will make sure that the bolt is nice and centralised. And just to make sure the lines are dead on, I'm just going to take the square here, scribe a straight line so I know that I'm going to be dead on the centre line and we're good to go. So I'll mark the holes and then we'll be back. So all I'm doing here is just drilling the holes, this is the pilot holes, 5mm drill and um, as I say I've got two pieces together there so the holes will be perfectly lined. And there we go, there's the first one done. And uh, I've got the mole grips there, the only reason for the mole grips being there is to keep them together. Now someone did ask me on Facebook, again, I seem to get an awful lot of messages through Facebook instead of uh, <laughs> through the YouTube channel, but that's no problem. And um, they said when they're drilling, they get all these really long, sort of wispy, I've actually got a, sort of this sort of thing, coming off their drill and um, binding up on the chuck. How can you avoid doing that? Well, the easiest way to do it is when you're drilling, is when they start, is back off the drill. Every time you back off, you break the chip. And that's the easiest way to stop you uh, getting all those long curly bits. Right, okay, so there's the, uh, the pilot holes done. Um, they are 5mm holes. Normally I'd use the centre drill, as you've seen before, but I didn't have enough clearance on the chuck. So, 
just use a 5mm centre drill there and the diameter of the U-bolt is 9.27mm so I should go up to 9.5mm as a clearance hole give it a try and if not we can always go up to 98 but uh, all I'm going to do is run progressively bigger drills through those holes until we've got the right clearance. Okay, so we've pretty much got all the component parts ready. That's the T bracket up there. That's the bit that goes on the wall. And there's your 18 inch out with your support, with your U-bolt. The other one here is going to be the K bracket. Essentially a T and a K start off the same. They both start off as T's. And then this one gets these additional two pieces. Uh, this one basically goes vertical on the wall. And that's your one, two and three bolt fix there. And then that's the diagonal pretty much like a sh normal triangulation on a shelf um, bracket or something just so that the weight is bearing on the end and that weight is transferred to the diagonal which then pushes it towards the wall so that's that's where it gets its strength so we're pretty much there um, I'm gonna put the T together for both then I'm going to addition the vertical and then I will trim this diagonal piece to fit in and um, we'll be all good to go now I'm going to have another try at some um, through the helmet welding shots on this one but we'll see how it goes. On a side note, I was asked the other day about when I countersink um, or deburr, or countersink deburr, much the same thing. Um, generally a countersink is deeper than someone who's deburring something but um, I've deburred all the holes and I don't know if you can see there but it's, it's smooth, there's no rough edges and it's got a slight countersink on it. Now there's a couple of ways you can do it. You could use something like that, which is, um, that's actually a large centre drill. Um, I don't know what size that is, doesn't say. Joy. Um, I'm not sure. But that's a centre drill, but it does have a nice tapered part there which is ideal for countersinking if it doesn't have to be too um, deburring if it isn't too large. Um, I've also got one of these which I use a lot for countersinking and deburring. It's um, got various increments and it goes from 4 to 30 millimeters. Alternatively as I've mentioned before you can just run a large drill bit through the hole so, uh, or into the hole rather. So if you drilled a hole with that size drill okay you could then come in with that size drill just using the tapered part of the bit to deburr. So there's a few different ways you can do it. Well I'm going to fire up the welder, go and make a brew and we'll be back. Okay so we've got the first one ready to weld. This is going to be the T bracket and uh, it's all clamped down to the bench nice and securely using these homemade, <laughs> homemade rough and ready uh, clamps, basically a piece of mild steel with a threaded bottom piece, um, a set screw in the bottom and then I basically used some normal clamps, took the took the regular piece off the bottom made a slot in the top of there and uh, just a little bit weld and um, then you can just stick it in the table so we've got those there held down in three places, it's not going to move anywhere, it's all nice and secure and this little piece here you can see sticking out I've just put it underneath to keep everything level. So we're going to fully weld these out. We're going to weld here and here, up here on both sides, and then along the back edge here. I'll pop a few tacks on. Should be all right because it's clamped down nice and tightly. But uh, just to stop anything pulling and moving, we shall clamp it up. It's all nice and square. No wobble on the square at all. So it's all square to each other, which is uh, the way you want it really. So there we go. Right. We'll uh, get the welder out of harm. Uh, get the welder. Get the camera out of harm's way, and um, get cracking. I did try and do some through the helmet shots. I've been playing around with it for a few hours, and um, I just keep getting loads of glare, and it's not great. So I got one that was reasonable. So I'll I'll throw that in just as a sort of a well bonus, really. But uh, 
we're not going to do any through the wel helmet welding shots on this one. If anyone's watching that knows a good way of doing it, um, I'm trying to. I've tried through uh, some normal welding glass. I've tried it with a uh, through the inside of a helmet, and it's it's just pants. So I'm not going to uh, bother. If anyone's got any tips on that, I'd be I'd be glad to hear it. Right, let's get uh, the torch going. Okay, so I've got the diagonal piece now in position, clamped down, ready to weld. The rest of the bracket is pretty much finished. What I did, normally when you get these brackets, they'll leave the angle square like that, pop it in there, weld it in, and jobs are done. What I've done is I've trimmed it off here, and I've trimmed it off there, so it sits nicely and flush up against the rest of the angle. What it actually means is you can get more weld so now I can weld along here, up here, and down here, plus along the back side, and same, same on the bottom. Whereas with this, all you'd be able to do is just run a weld here and a weld there. That's probably strong enough, but again, I'm making it. So um, it's, uh, it's going to be uh, a bit stronger and um, should, last, should last nicely. So all I'm going to do is weld that up, and um, that's basically the two brackets finished. The T bracket has been sat there quietly the whole time that's all done that's all welded some quite chunky welds on there excessive on that one actually um, what I did was I turned the power down on the welder and um, that was sufficient so uh, yeah you live and learn and um, you just adjust as you go so we get uh, we get that welded in
there we go. One pair of finished T and K brackets, all ready with the uh, the U bolts in place. So all in all, didn't take too long. Um, I would think um, you'd probably be able to get this project if you allotted yourself an hour. An hour should be plenty of time. Um, if you just get on it and get doing it rather than filming it or start stopping um, other things coming in, you know, other jobs needing doing, um, an hour, no more than an hour to knock those up in my view. Um, one thing I would say, put a washer on the back of here, put a washer as well as a nut on the back of there just to help uh, spread the load and um, you'll be good to go. But there we go, one pair of 18 inch T and K brackets finished so hopefully that was of some help now I know someone's going to ask me what should you use to attach it to the wall and what I would normally recommend would be one of these which is a proper anchoring bolt or wall bolt and it basically works on a wedge principle this part here is tapered and as you do the bolt up it pulls that t uh, that wedge into the mechanism and basically splays it out so it's much wider than uh, when you started and they are very heavy duty um, that's what I would recommend so there we go another project done hopefully gonna get back out portable very soon been a bit of a struggle and a lot of stuff on um, I haven't even been able to get out on the midweek net on a Wednesday night which is a bit of a pain but um, I have got the the radio in here now um, and I did speak to uh, a couple of people on the midweek net from here and um, that was all good but it is limited in what it can hear skip no problem piece of wet string and you can make those contacts but on a ground wave net you really need to get uh, up on high ground so we we'll catch you back surely thanks very much